Hello and welcome to this original art photography video tutorial. I'm Joe Lenton and in this tutorial we're going to have a look at adding together light trails images to make more interesting image. Um, here we've got five images that I've shot all of the same bridge at sunset and we've got various different light trails in each of the images. As you can see as we go through they're in different places. Okay, On their own each one not all that interesting. So what we're going to do is add them together to make a more interesting image with the various light trails all stacked up. There are one or two other little problems that we've got. Um, that you can see that the clouds are not in the same place every time. That's because these are taken five seconds for each image and it was a very windy day so the clouds were moving quite a bit. So we're going to have some problems with that and there's also at times you can notice that the image is not completely in exactly the same place every time there's a little bit of bounce on the tripod there um, so we'll just have to sort that out when we get into Photoshop as well so we've identified what the what the main problems are going to be and uh, we'll sort those out now in Photoshop so if you have Photoshop elements you might have to load these separately into elements if you are using Photoshop itself right mouse click and go to edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. This will then take each of the five images and load them up as separate layers within the same document in Photoshop so that we can then uh, create one image using those five different layers. As I said if you're working with Photoshop elements you might have to load them in differently. You can of course if you don't want to use Lightroom you can load in through Adobe Bridge, Adobe Camera Raw, um, that would work fine as well and um, other programs that allow you to layer up your images. Um, you might just have to save your images as JPEGs or TIFFs first and then load them in to your other image editing program. Okay so over here on the right you can see we've got our five layers. I'm just going to deal with one of our problems first so if I just select all of these. If you remember earlier I said that there seems to be a bit of bounce in the tripod so that they're not all exactly the same um, with all of the uh, framing of everything. So if I come over to edit auto align layers then Photoshop will line up our layers for us so we don't have any problems when it comes to blending them together. Okay so that's done. The next step is over here you can see where it says normal, normal blend mode. If you go down to where it says lighten all of a sudden our various different light trails have all appeared on the same image. What it's doing is grabbing the brightest pixels um, or pixels that are brighter than our base image from each of the other images and adding them all in and that of course is going to be mainly going to be our light trails. If I just switch these off you can see how it's added them in like so. You'll also have noticed that it's added stuff in to the sky so the sky now looks quite smudgy and messy up here and there's more of this brighter area than there was before because it's added the brighter area from all of the images in there. We don't want that so we're going to deal with that by making a selection using the rectangular selection tool here. We drag that from the top left corner just down over our horizon like so. Uh, go to select, modify, feather feather radius to about 100 pixels to give us a smooth transition in there and um, what we can then do with this is to create um, a mask over our layer like so which we need to invert we just press ctrl and i on a mask that will invert it um, the white bit enables us to keep what we want to from that particular layer so that's why we need the white at the bottom and the black is going to get rid of the sky on that layer. Now clearly it's only done it on one layer so we need to do it on the other so you press control and left mouse on the on the mask itself go to the next layer add the mask in to that control and click on the mask to reselect it go to the next layer add a mask and you'll get that one applied we'll do that once more. You can see that the sky has tidied up nicely and that's because there is now only one image whose sky we've actually got in there and that's the bottom image See, when I turn the bottom image off, the sky's gone. So all of these top four, the sky has been taken out because they've got the black bit of the mask on them. So the sky has been tidied up, the image is all nicely aligned, we've got all these extra 
uh, light trails in there, so things are improving a lot already. There are still a few things that we can do with this image to make it a little bit more interesting. For example, these bright patches here, well, they're okay, but um, they do draw the eye rather a lot, and in some ways it would be nicer if they were a bit more sort of orangey or pinky, so they'd reflect the, um, the sunset down the bottom here, and it would also look more in tune with the lights from the light trails, which are this kind of slightly orange and red colour. So we can do that by adding in photo filters, so if you click photo filter and you've got your warming filter that comes up there, um, if you drag that across until you start getting some nice warm colours in, in the highlights, look at the highlights, just ignore everything else, I know it looks horrible, just go for the highlights for the moment. Uh, we can always adjust this again later anyway, so that's fine, that doesn't matter, we'll go with that. Uh, come down and add a mask in, Control and I to invert your mask. Now you can see it's gone all black, so we want to reveal some back, so we've got white, go to the paintbrush, keep your opacity and flow fairly low so that you can gradually add more in. So I've gone for 30% on each, and you can start to brush some of that colour just into the areas that you want it. You can also, of course, take your opacity and flow that bit lower and just add some subtle extra bits into the sky as a whole without affecting absolutely everything. Um, but where you want it more, you can layer it up that little bit heavier. Okay, so you can end up with a bit more of an orangey colour in there. Now, just so you can see that effect, if I turn that off and then on again, so it's gone from being just white to a bit more of an orangey glow. If that's too strong for you, you can just turn your opacity down and bring it up until it's at a level that you're happier with, so it looks a bit more natural. Now you can also do the same sort of thing with a magenta filter to bring in some of those slightly pinky colours. Now again, obviously it's going to look pretty horrible when you initially put that up like this because it's affecting everything, so we do like we did before, we're going to stick a, a mask in there, invert it, and then we can paint on where we actually want that colour to be. So I'm going to go for a very low flow and opacity to begin with, so I can just add it in a bit more broadly in one or two areas without it being too strong. And then you can go for something a little bit stronger, but still be a bit careful with it, and just add some of that in around your highlights, perhaps, as well. Now you can have a look at before and after with that one. And similarly, if you think that's a bit too strong, you, know, you can bring that down and just bring it back up to the level that you actually would like it to be, where you feel it's going to be a bit more natural for you. So you can play around with that a lot more until you can get a sort of effect that, that you like, um, but that gives you the idea. And then overall, of course, we can then adjust the contrast with the curves layer. Tend to bring it down a fair bit because it is supposed to be nearly night time after all, so there's no harm with it being fairly dark. Um, something a bit like that. So you're going to create a little bit of a an S curve shape to it. Now you might find with that that it's gone and brightened up the sky in here again that little bit too much. So if it's over affected that and you're getting it going over exposed there, bung a mask on it, switch to black, and you can just paint out where you don't want that curves layer to affect it. So those areas there, you can see when you turn it on and off there, they're not really being affected anymore. Okay, so that looks a little bit more dramatic. You might want to do something a bit more with that, of course, and edit that a little bit further, but um, I'm not going to go into all of that now. Uh, the only other sort of thing I might do um, just quickly is show you that another crop might be a bit more interesting here. We go for a um, two by one crop, for instance, like so, and that I think is going to enable us to have something that looks a bit more interesting. Where are we? Ro ratio of two to one. We'll drag that down so the top third is roughly level with the horizon. We'll do something like that. We'll just tuck it in a little at the sides so there's not going to be any of those lost pixels there. And Chop it off, 
and there we go. Now we can have a quick look and see what we've done to change everything if I just group these off. So that's just one image before we start doing anything and that's with several images uh, after we've played around with it that little bit more like that. We could do more to bring out the reds and uh, other lights down here by using a little bit more selective contrast on that. Um, I'll leave you to fiddle around with that sort of thing and of course when you're done you can uh, save it with the layers in or you can just flatten it off uh, as a JPEG or a TIFF and you're done. So that's a simple way for improving some light trails images and uh, creating something that looks a bit busier and a bit more dramatic than perhaps uh, one image uh, is capable of doing for you. So hope you found that helpful and do visit the blog on the website for various other photography tips. Thank you. Bye.